to go ahead and get us going. What is this? Switcher Studio? Switcher Studio, brother. There we go. Let me make sure it takes a second to kick in. Can you hear me? Yep. Good. Let's let this go. So what's up, brother? Selling homes from uh, middle of nowhere? No, no homes are being sold. <laughs> no, there's no, no homes being sold. It's like uh, just managing the business that we had and then taking this as a, uh, I mean, doing our best to try to sell what we can, but it's a lot of just planning for the future, you know? So talk to us, right? Um, you know, we've done sort of this. Um, what do you tell your team at a time like this? Um, you know, my main focus with everybody without telling them it's my main focus, unless they're watching this right now is, uh, their mental health, right? Yeah. Mental health, everything's good. And I've got to lead by example, right? So I, I can't be fake. Um, and I can't just say hoorah, everything's awesome. Let's go, let's go, let's go because they're going to know it's bullshit. Yeah. So I've got to tell them, you know, uh, that I'm feeling the pain too. Things are tough. This is crazy. What are you guys feeling? This is nuts. I'm right there with you. But guess what? This isn't the financial market collapse of 2008 that took years to come back. Banks are fine as far as we know. The world is fine as far as we know, right? This is this, this is a virus and viruses come and viruses go, you know, just like car accidents. Car accidents come, car accidents go. The best analogy I have for this is a... You know, we're stuck on a highway, bumper to bumper, and we're at a standstill. And we know there's somewhere up ahead, um, and we don't know when we're going to get to it. We don't know how bad it is, although we think it's pretty bad because the traffic's really, really yeah. bad. And slowly but surely, we're going to inch our way closer. And then come June, right? June 1, we're finally going to get there. We're going to see it. We're going to see the fact that there's clear traffic ahead, but we're going to slow down and say, wow, that was really, really, really bad. Holy shit. Thank God I didn't get affected. I wasn't hurt, but man, this screwed up my whole day because I've been stuck in traffic. And then the minute we go by it, we're going to do exactly what we do at the end of every traffic jam, which is we fucking floor it, you know, because now you're going to make up all this lost time and try to get there. You're going to be mad, you know, for the whole trip, we're still going to be set back. We're going to be half an hour late, an hour late, but... At least we're not dead, you know? Um, so count our lucky stars that way. And that's exactly the way it's going to play out. And in September and October, we're all going to be busy. We're all going to be tired. We're going to come back from some dinner meeting. And we're going to sit there and we're going to say, man, remember quarantine? Like, remember, remember when we didn't take advantage of quarantine and all we did was yeah. complain about being quarantined? And now I'm, like, exhausted. Like, that's... That's what's going to happen. So it's keeping people mentally healthy, keeping them positive, happy, and coming up with things for people to do because no one's ever been through this before. Like, So you I tell the uh, story a couple times. Last time we did a live, right, when you got into the business, yeah, right, um, it was a tough time. Then you, we went through bird flu, right, same old, same old thing. That's obviously a little bit bigger. Yeah. But um, but I but I agree. So let me ask you this, right? So you pull yourself out of New York, which was a hell of a smart move, right? Yeah. But so now you're up. Uh, I didn't want to leave. Not my yeah. choice. The wife said, "Get in the car." It was uh, yeah. We've now been here um, as of today. We've been here two weeks. Is that uh, the longest you guys have ever been together? Every minute, like I've never done that. I mean. Yeah, I mean, quarantined in one house and you don't really go anywhere. I mean, yeah, I mean, I like, it is, it's a lot, you know? And what's tough about it is like, I still have stuff to do. I got calls, yeah. meetings all day long. Like everybody's doing their best to keep things moving forward. But because I'm at home to the baby, to the wife, to yeah, yeah, so this is her mom, um, you know, it's office, I'm in the other room. And so come watch yeah. the baby. More. It's like, well, that's I can't, I can't. Okay, you know, so it's like kind of picking your your battles as best you can, but it's trying to stay productive. I mean, I um, listen. The financial crisis in 08 and 09 when I got into the business, what it really taught me uh, in watching everyone get really, really hurt was you don't put all your eggs in one basket and you figure out ways to diversify income. Yeah. Um, because any one market that you're in falls out from under you. 
You don't want to be homeless, right? You're going to hurt, obviously, but you don't want to be homeless. So what can you do to, you know, find income in other places? And then, you know, Hurricane Sandy, way more than SARS for us. Hurricane Sandy, it flooded lower Manhattan, yeah. the Rockaway. It shut down power for a long time south of 42nd Street. All business came to a halt. Um, and so that really taught me to diversify location and kind of the business that we were doing. So it was, you know, because I saw a lot of salespeople who were, you know, the best real estate brokers in Tribeca. All of a sudden, all business goes away because yeah. our Tribeca's on the water. And so, this is really yeah. teaching me to diversify platform. What, um, you know, you're, you're still interviewing, which I love, right? You're not slowing down. But I got a question here from Chad. Uh, what what do you do to keep your mind sharp, right? We know you're a fitness guy. We've seen you chopping wood, running through the snow, which is for your daughter. She must be in, in heaven with all that land. But yeah. uh, let's talk about, you know, how, how do you, uh, Chad asked a question, how do you keep your mind sharp? Um, I'm, I'm focusing on, you know, it's, it's interesting. I probably keep my mind sharper now than I did before Corona because now I'm forced to only use my mind. Like I'm at a little desk with my papers, my computer, I'm on video calls and phone calls all day long. I've got the new, I've never watched the news more in my entire life. I'm learning new things every day, you know, because before Corona, you're finding, you're in appointments, you're doing your thing and you kind of get like, clean, you know, and I'm, I'm a creature of habit. Like I love routine, feed off of my routine, you know, my hourly appointments, everything. Um, but uh, uh, so I, I'm trying to read as much as I can and I'm focusing on new business and what I'm going to do come June and like all the new types of things. So like with you, it's, you know, let's let's not slow down on hiring. Let's do as many interviews as we possibly can now because people have time and a lot of people are being laid off exactly. to new people. Let's figure it out. Let's see what we can do. Got it. How's my now, let me get another question. question. You're okay. You're in the middle of nowhere, man. Yeah, the service here is brutal. Did you grow up there as a kid? No, I uh, I was born in Texas and kind of yep. grew up out of Boston. And my, my parents had a, a little lake house up in New Hampshire. I don't know. I don't know, seven or eight years ago because my brothers are both in Massachusetts and they wanted a place to come to to do holidays. So it sits here yeah. empty most of the time. How's uh, the wife holding up? I know she's busy, right? She's raising a kid, just launched a book, right? What's uh, how's she doing? Yeah, I was gonna have her do this with us, but the baby, um, that baby, it's 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 a lot of work, and she's getting uh, she's one, and now she's getting all these back teeth back here. She's moving quickly, and so it's oh. so she's. She's not sleeping that well. And so they're taking her on a walk um, right now around the lake because there's no one here. Like social distancing is super easy in New Hampshire. Um, and yeah. uh, uh, so they're taking her on a walk and just trying to get her to find me fall asleep. There you go. Let me get you another question. Here. Her gonna... children's book. What's that? I said, yeah, her children's book just came out. Um, uh, and it's doing well. So that's really yeah, cool. Yeah, talk about that. I'm gonna yeah, put so a link up there. So we'll... go ahead. No, so she um, uh, wrote a children's book called "To the Moon and Back for You," which is published by Random House. It's uh, got a, an amazing illustrator in it, um, and it's yeah. about kind of the uh, the uh, all the different ways that you know people go to getting a baby. So it's IVF, IUI, surrogacy, and there's no children's book out there about IVF, and so hers is. Um, hers is the first, which is, is pretty cool, but we took us a long time to have Xena and we finally figured it out with the help of a lot of doctors. And so that's what the book is about. So it's out there. You can find it to the moon and back for you on Amazon, anywhere you want. Let me ask you this. This guy said he read your book, right? His question is, will you do anything different, uh, when this is over? I'm going to do a lot more zoom calls. That's for sure. I'm going to cut down, even in the city, I'm going to cut down on traffic, you know, uh, a lot because it's amazing what you can get done. Like the same, I, 
you know, what was in the city, a two hour meeting with a half hour to get there and a half hour to get back to my office. So three hours of my day, I get done in one hour now, right? Like I've got a, like I get, it's way more efficient. Everyone logs in, everyone does the work they need to do and they log out and push for a Zoom uh, video conference calls as I possibly can just to be efficient with time, you know? And I'm gonna continue to figure out ways to diversify my business so that, um, and the investments that I make, like I, you know, I, in 2008, when the stock market crashed, I, I, had, I had no money. I didn't have any money in the market. So it was bad for a lot of people, but it wasn't bad for me. Uh, now I've got money in the market, right? 12 years later, and now it sucks. You know? <laughs> so now I'm like, I'm watching it. What's, what are we down? We're down, uh, oh, we're only down 600 points right now. That's, that's, that's oh. great. Yeah, it's, it's brutal. Uh, you know, it's, it's so, so, nuts. And I'm I'm sure you have it. You know, it's tricky when you got a team. I've seen your team, right? They're all high energy, always out selling. I mean, you know, from a real estate sam standpoint, you know, what does that look like to you? Like you said, you know, just like bird flu. Next thing you know, we're back cranking because the market, you know, like you said, I I'm on the loan side of things. People are rates are low. People are are, are still, you know, borrowing money, right? Sure. Uh, how do you think this hurts the real estate business as a whole? People just want to wait to see what happens or I'm putting a Corona clause in there in case I get it. I'm backing out. People are trying to put Corona clauses into contracts, but for the most part, you know, New York city is, is very attached to the stock market. And even if people aren't invested in the market, you know, if you're going to contract on a place for $2 million and then the stock market drops 3000 points the next day, even though they're not directly correlated, yeah. buyers say to themselves, oh, wait a minute, I'm paying too much for this apartment. They're like, no, you're getting an amazing deal. It was asking 2.5, look at the comps. And they're like, yeah, but look at the market, turn on CNN. I now want this for 175. So oh. like we've been dealing with a lot of retrades, renegotiations, and listen, it's anyone's guess where we go from here, but I think we were on very stable ground in February. This is just a virus, it'll go away. And we'll be on even, it, it's what I said, right? It's a traffic jam. Once we pass the traffic accident and we see how bad it is, it's gonna be bad, it's gonna be slow. And then we're gonna all really, really try to go back to normal. Let me ask you this, got a question. Um, you know, you do always mention your routine, right? And keeping your doer hours. Uh, this is from, from Kurt. Do you find yourself focusing more on one thing now? Or yes, I, I'm, uh, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I physically can't do as much as I used to. So that's changed. I'm not showing apartments. I'm not going to closings. I'm not facilitating walkthroughs and inspections. I can't even go to my office. I'm not even there. Um, so I'm spending a lot of time with my CEO hat on um, and my, my keeper hat on, right? So my finder and keeper hats. Um, and so that's planning for the future, building business. What can we do better going forward? Um, and then just trying to manage the expenses and the money as best I can so I can be smart. Like we, you know, we had planned to spend a significant amount of money this year because business was going really, really well. And we were in complete expansion mode that that hasn't changed, but I'm really being careful about the money we spend because I don't want to be in a position where next year another virus hits and I got to be one of those people that lays off a hundred people. Yeah. You want to be lean. You want to be lean and mean, but I'm, you know, it's, it's as simple as like, okay, well, once this is all done, let's focus on a different neighborhood. How are we going to attack that neighborhood? How are we going to market to them? Can we use this to market to them in any way? And remember real estate, right? Like what I've also been telling my team is there is no better way to show people the value of a new home than by locking them in their current shitty home for months. Ah, yeah. So like, you know, like it's I, a lot of times when we do these deals, it's like, you know, it's out of sight, out of mind. People want to get a three bedroom or a four bedroom, but then they go back home and they're like, this is fine. We don't need it. But you lock that person in there. You don't let them leave for a couple months. I don't care how nice your house is. It starts to feel like jail. I think there's going to be a lot of movement in the real estate market after this because people are just going to be like, I hate my apartment. It sucks. I can't. There's no insulation. I hear everything. I need a bigger place or I need a single family house. I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity for, for salespeople. 
Let me ask you this. I, I, I see you all the time, dress sharp. I don't know. Uh, let me see if you can see my screen real quick. Um, tell me if this, uh, what this is all about. Can you see my screen? Is it still me? It is still me. Yeah, it's still you. You see that? Oh, you can't see it. I, I, it was a pair of your uh, your boots that you posted the other day, cowboy, cowboy boots. boots. Those were, that's what you first. Yeah, those are my nice shoes. Yeah, I saw that. So let me get you one more one more question, maybe maybe two. This guy, uh, Ryan, is your team working to provide clients resources and a plan for those? that are still trying to sell their property, show listings, virtual tour. Jay Todd Jennings, my man, what's up, brother? Uh, yep, absolutely. A lot of our time right now, um, and it's mostly in the mornings, is talking to every seller that we have. If they're on the market, um, and we already have we're doing those virtual tours for buyers, if we're on the market and we don't have any video because the whole world shut down beforehand, then what we're doing is we're putting a lot of our owners um, and our tenants to work. You know, if they're home and they're locked in and we have someone that wants to see it, I have the owner or the tenant do a FaceTime showing with the broker or the buyer directly. Like, I don't want to wait. So I have the owner walk around like, hey, you're the best. You're the best person to show your house. I'm in New Hampshire. Here's their number. They're going to FaceTime you. Show them around. Show them how great your home is to be stuck. In. That's fine. Um, so I'm working with them. Now. And to be honest, it breaks up their day. So it's kind of like they kind of like it. Um, they get, and it's funny because then they get the feedback directly because then it's not me saying, ah, oh, well, they didn't really like the size of the bedroom. Then the owner calls me after the show and they're like, yeah, I did that FaceTime showing. I don't know why he didn't like my bedroom size. He's a dick. Anyway, let's find someone new. So now it's not me. You know, the owners are hearing it, uh, for themselves. Um, but you know, it's also, we're also being very careful and it's, it's property specific because listen, virtual showings, virtual tours you know, are, are two dimensional and homes are four dimensional, right? There's cubic square footage, there's vertical square feet, there's light, there's air, there's everything about a home that makes people like it. Um, and so a lot of times when you do these virtual tours, people say, oh yeah, it's, yeah, it's darker than I thought, Never mind." And it's because the brightness on their screen was turned down or something. And so like, right. that's a person. And I'll never be able to get into the apartment when this is all done because they're just going to say, oh, that was the one I saw on video that was too dark. And that's just the way they're going to remember it. So, you know, the first impression is really important, which is why my team has a, a big media team. And we spend so much time and effort on our on our, yeah. on, our properties on YouTube and on Facebook. Um, but we're, it, we're what did you say? And we had some good interviews for your media team yesterday. You're not stopping. Yeah, you know, no. Especially Kyle. Kyle Kyle doesn't know how to stop. Kyle would be in the hospital setting up interviews. And he will write you a 70-page response, bullet points on the person. I love I it. Just, I, I love people. I'd rather have that than the person who says they're going to do something by seven and I get it a week later. He's a beast. Let me um, – one more question. I know you're busy. So for me and you, but let's ask you, uh, what's one positive thing you think this pandemic uh, should force us to do that we haven't, you know, or haven't accepted um, if it didn't happen, right? So something that all of a sudden, you know, fake more time with family, I don't know. Zoom calls, what's your answer? Yeah, I think, you know, my, uh, I did a video on this the other day and I've been calling it the, the and. So it's like with all the free, time you have now right it's not free it's bonus so it's bonus spending time up that you just never had time to do before you know just to write and stay positive like when have you ever had time on a wednesday afternoon to paint like when have you ever had time on a wednesday afternoon to pick up the guitar that you haven't touched since you were 16 years old and it's been sitting in your closet or like when have you ever had the time yeah. to like actually take your kid for a walk in the middle of the day and play hide and seek on a Wednesday afternoon? Like find that thing where you're going to do the work you need to do. You're going to plan for the future. You're going to get a business plan ready to go for what happens for your life come June one. And you're going to learn how to cook because that's what you've always wanted to do. And guess what? You only eat from home cooking now, you know? So that's, that's, that's kind of what I'm working on. Oh, there's Kyle. What's up, Kyle? 
Um, all right, let's end with this. A lot of people look up to you. I always make you do this. One piece of advice to, to the thousands that are going to see this, right? We're all in it together. From the man, Ryan, what's up? Um, I guess I have two pieces of advice. You know, oh, like one, you. Yeah, Perfect. one is – one is 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 what kind of we were just talking about, right? Which is find your find your end. Done from what you had before Corona hit. So make sure if you are somebody that worked out in the mornings, like still do that. Just change the way you work out. Get your body moving in the morning. If you used to get to the office by eight, get to your home office by seven fifty-five. Right, but structure out your day. Put it in your calendar. All the calls you want to make, stick it in your calendar. So when you wake up, you look really really busy. That way your mind is going to stay productive and moving forward. So when June 1 or May 1 hits, whenever this is over, go. Um, they use this time to, to train, right? Use this time to learn. You know, I, I, it always amazes me how professional athletes, you know, 100% of their work um, is broken up into 95 and 5. 5% of their work is games. That's what you see on TV. The other 95% is training, is working, is practicing, is learning. Salespeople, you know, whether you're selling insurance, mortgages, selling people, if you're in the recruitment industry, selling homes like me, we have percent of our time, we're in the game, we're working, we're showing, we're doing this, we're selling, selling, selling. And then maybe 5% is training. So um, that's why we put out the, the sales course. And to anyone out there who wants to learn how to generate leads, um, uh, I, I hate cold calling. And so if you go to ryansirhant.com slash lead gen, um, I did a free webinar like the day before the world fell apart. So I, I clean shave and with a suit in my office with kind of my, my seven secrets on how to generate leads without cold calling. So you know that, that's, that's, that'll take up 30, 40 minutes of your day. Go watch that. There you go, bud. Well, stay safe. I'm going to keep the interviews coming. Uh, tell the family I said hello. We'll get Amelia on next time. And yeah. uh, when do you think you're coming home, man? Eh? I, dude, no. Abs I will, no. That will kill me. I think we're probably two weeks here remaining. Um, and then we'll do the last two weeks of April back at the apartment and kind of start to get back into the swing of things. Um, I, that's, that's the plan, anyway. Awesome, man. Well, stay safe. Tell everyone I said hello. I'll call you later. All right, man. See ya. Later, brother.